Okay, good morning. Today is the 15th day of Cheshvan, the 30th of October, and we are up to the second reading of Vayera. And in this reading we hear about the atrocities of Sodom. We don't really know what Sodom and Gomorrah were doing, but we know that it was pretty terrible. There's a famous verse that God says, let us go down to see whether it is like her cry. And the plain meaning of this is that, apart from the part of God coming down, which is hard to understand, we'll talk about that, but it means that God wanted to judge the city and see whether the cries that he was hearing from it were indeed cries of injustice. Um, it could be that it was something else. This whole idea that God needs to come down is discussed in uh, Hasidus in length. And what it tries to convey is that there is the transcendent aspect of God and there is the imminent aspect of God. And when we say to come down, we mean that God is coming down from his uh, transcendent state in which he looks at the world, as it were, in general and down into the imminent state where he shares the pain of the world, he, as it were, experiences the, the pain of the world, and that becomes a predominant aspect, and so the judgment can be done. So this teaches us also that when a judge uh, is trying any kind of case, he has to come down. He can't stay where he was. He can't stay as just a removed uh, officer of justice. He has to actually understand the people that are coming to him, he has to understand their feelings, their motives. And uh, I once asked this of a judge in Israel, and he said that whenever there's someone that he feels um, he doesn't understand, there's actually a service that the courts do. They appoint a psychologist and a social worker to interview the, uh, pl the uh, plaintiff. And uh, they interview them. It can be a process of, uh, of a number of weeks. They visit their home. And they give him a full picture of this person's life as best as they can see uh, from, from, the, uh, from, from their vantage point, which is much better than the judges who's sitting completely above it. And then he says he takes all of that into consideration. In any case, there's this idea here of God coming down, and it's not the only place in the Torah that it mentions that God came down. The most famous place is Vayera Dashem al Sinai that Hashem came down on Mount Sinai to give the Torah, to turn the transcendent Torah into something that was imminent, something that could be heard by every person, and not just by uh, the prophets. And there is a whole medrash, meaning a whole work of homiletic uh, interpretation of Torah, that is called Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer, which is based on the ten times that God came down, that it says in the Bible that God came down. Uh, this is the, I believe, the third time. The second time was in the time of the flood, <clears throat> the third time was here. The whole Medrash, Pirke de, de Rabbi Eliezer, the chapters of Rabbi Eliezer, from chapter 14 and on till the end of the book is based on these ten descents of the Divine Presence into our reality. The first time was he says, in the Garden of Eden, when God, it doesn't say that he came down, it says that he walked. And Rashi there says he was walking in the Garden of Eden, he was skipping, like jumping in the Garden of Eden, which means that it was sometimes above, sometimes below. This was this feeling of God being imminent and transcendent, apparently at the same time. And then he judged man and said that because of what you've sinned, you need to be uh, evicted from the Garden of Eden. There's a very interesting parallel to this. This is a separate topic than what we call the seven descents of the Div Divine Presence. The seven de descents was made uh, famous by the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. Uh, for his day of passing, he didn't know he was going to pass, at least he didn't reveal that he was, but he prepared a discourse, a very deep discourse, for his day of passing. And it was called, I have come to my garden, Bati Legani. And in this discourse, he explains that our generation is the set, well, he didn't explain the seventh, but he said, he quoted the Medrash, a different Medrash, 
that says that there were seven generations that caused God to leave reality. In other words, to not be imminent and to become transcendent. And these seven generations were the sin of, of Adam, the sin of Cain, and so on, the sin of the, of, of the generation of the flood, the sin of the gener generation of the dispersion, and so on and so on, until the time of Abraham. And then he says, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Levi, um, I'm missing someone, and then Amram, and then, uh, uh, sorry, Levi, Kehat, Amram, and then Moses, they did a succession of seven generations that brought the Divine Presence back down, and that was the descent of God on Mount Sinai to give the Torah. So that's a description of that most famous descent, that it actually has to do with a, a uh, the Divine Presence receding and then coming back down, seven up and seven down. In fact, if you think about it, seven up is actually not a very good name for a beverage. Because what it means is seven generations that the Divine Presence went up, it receded from this world. It was evicted from this world, as it were. But those seven generations brought the Divine Presence back down. And the very interesting thing about this is that when the Lubavitch Rebbe assumed leadership, he focused his entire program, what he wanted to do, on this discourse from his father-in-law, from the previous Rebbe. And he started with this, and he explained, we are the seventh generation. How, do, how are we the seventh generation exactly? With the seventh generation from the Alter Rebbe, from the founder of Chabad, seven generations are bringing the Divine Presence back down into reality in our times. There's a beautiful uh, inter interchange that I just read about with the Rebbe. Some very great scholar came to him and said, I have two questions for you. In principle, I'm not against what you do. But I have two questions for you. I need, I need them answered. One is, I think I may have actually uh, told this uh, a, f a few months ago. One is, why is it that you don't consult with anyone? Everything you do, you do by yourself. And this is famous about the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Everything he did, he was sort of like a one-man show. We don't see that he had a circle of advisors with whom he'd consult, other scholars of Torah. It seems like everything was just from him. The second question was, why do you make such a big deal out of this idea that we are the seventh generation that need to bring the Divine Presence back into reality? The Rebbe said the answer to both questions is the same. Because I'm the only one who understands that the most important thing our generation needs to do is to bring the Divine Presence back down, I have no one to consult with. So any question that I have, nobody else sees it the way I see it. They think that the center focus today is somewhere else. And so because they think it's somewhere else, they have a different theory about what needs to be done. So everything that I do, I have to do alone, he says, because no one else understands why I think this is so central. But this was definitely the highlight. But what we have here, again, is that that was just about these seven descents that the Rebbe is talking about. They're a different topic from these seven descents that Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer is talking about. How do those work? How do the ones, the ten descents in the Bible, how do they actually work? The way that they are is that once the Divine Presence comes down, indeed it is to judge something, it's for the, pro for the purpose of judgment, but the aftermath is always a change in human life and reality. That really these descents, even though they're not like what the Rebbe described in his uh, discourse of seven descents of bringing the Divine Presence back down for good, each one of these descents changed humanity in such a way that it actually in the end led to positive change. And so we have here the uh, first, uh, in, in the second Aliyah, we have this uh, descent in our, in our Parsha. 
And this is, like we said, it's the third descent. So we had first the descent in the time of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The second descent was with the Tower of Babel, with the generation of the dispersion that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. And the third descent is the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. How do we understand these ten descents? They go from the bottom to the from bottom to above, meaning the first descent uh, in the Garden of Eden is the sphere of kingdom, and then the Tower of Babel is the Yasod. You can think about the Tower of Babel itself. Well, let's just say this: the, the, the Garden of Eden is like God's kingdom on earth. It is the uh, uh, state in which it was clear that God is everything. The Tower of Babel itself is foundation. It's easy to see why uh, the tower is related to foundation. And the young, the, we said that there was a cry that came from Sodom and Gomorrah. That cry is the cry specifically, says Rashi, of one girl who gave charity. And because of that, they, um, they, uh, uh, they coated her with honey and they gave her to the bees to eat. And that's how they killed her, this terrible, terrible torture. And so that young girl crying out, that is the sphere of Hod, the sphere of thanksgiving, which is always considered to be feminine, and it's also considered to be the small part of the feminine, like a, like a young uh, girl. And so that's a, a these ten descents, and this very important medrash that everyone should read, by the way, it doesn't end, it actually uh, seemed to be an incomplete version that we have of this text. We don't have the complete version because we're missing the last two descents. It's a very, very important uh, medrash to read. It has a lot of the eschatology in Yiddishkeit, a lot of the discussion of the end of days. And so much for today. Thank you for joining. Hope to see you tomorrow at the right time, which is going to be 6.15 on the West Coast. Bye-bye.